Well, you know, it's, it's great to be here in, in, in South Korea. And if you look at the history of uh, the Korean, uh, you know, development, it's actually quite amazing. This is a country that, think about it, is smaller than Liberia, or smaller than Benin. It's actually smaller than Mali. It's one third of the size of a country like Algeria. And in fact, 32 countries are bigger than Korea. They were in the 1960s, the same you know, per capita GDP was maybe a little bit about $200 or so. Today, if you take a look at them, per capita GDP, $26,000. And so how did they do it? They call it the miracle of the Han River. You know, it wasn't really a miracle. It was the fact that they decided to industrialize. They industrialized, they started out with heavy industries. They went to light manufacturing. Then they moved up into a more high-tech, you know, value-added industries. And today you have the Samsungs of the world. Everybody carries the Samsung. You look at the LG, you know, televisions is all made here. You look at all the Hyundai, all the cars are made here. What did they do and how did they do it? I think first and foremost is the importance of long-term planning. The second thing I think is very important is to have very clear industrial policies that are implemented in a sustainable way. It's not start today and tomorrow then you don't know what you're doing in a very, very sustainable way. The third is heavy investment in science and technology and innovations. And finally, I think, for me, the most important thing for them is the mindset matters. You know, when you're really tired of being poor, when you say it's time for me to really develop and give myself wealth, then you're going to start industrializing. No other nation in the world, no nation, in fact, no single nation in the world has ever gotten out of poverty into wealth without industrializing. The Koreans decided they were going to do it, and they got it done. So the mindset and commitment, very critical. I want to take you over that last point, you know, and let's go deeper on that one. You know, so the, we're talking about a new thinking for African governments, for policymakers. You know, how can we, how, can, how is the African Development Bank ask, uh, acting as a catalyst, you know, to drive this new thinking? Well, you know, let me tell you why. You know, um, if you take, for example, you know, Africa as a continent, and as president of the African Development Bank, my mind always walks through this all the time, is that Africa is not a poor continent at all. But Africa just happens to have a lot of poor people. And so what we've got to do is God has blessed this continent with a lot of natural resources. You know, we've got great sunshine, we've got great agricultural lands. We, in fact, 65% of all the available arable land to feed 9 billion people in the world by 2050. It's not in Asia, it's not in Latin America or Europe, it's actually in Africa. We've got lots of oil, we have gas, we have minerals, we have metals. So we don't have any excuse to be poor. What we've got to do is to manage those resources well, is to industrialize that. And that's why the bank has actually launched a major strategy called Industrialize Africa. Is one of our high five priorities. And the key of that is we want to support countries to have very good industrial policies, helping them to actually invest a lot more in infrastructure that can enable industrial clusters and special economic zones to actually emerge. And third is also to make sure that we are supporting the development of capital markets, that you can mobilize savings pool, that can drive private sector investments. And most importantly is that as a bank, you know, what's most important to us is not just the money, knowledge matters. You know, so that African countries can be exposed to why did it work, how did they do it in China, how did they do it in, in South Korea, how did they do it in Japan, how did they do it in Latin America. You know, so that we can actually have the right knowledge products to help them learn from the best, make sure you do what the best did but they'll make the mistakes of others. And that's what we are doing. And that's, we're gonna be investing in the area of industrializing Africa, uh, you know, a total of $35 billion over the next 10 years. It's roughly $3.5 billion a year. And our goal is very clear. We wanna help this continent to raise its industrial GDP. Right now, it's roughly about, you know, in, in industrial GDP, GDP value, so roughly about $700 billion. We want to raise that to about $1.7 trillion by 2030. And that you will see a lot of jobs being created and so on. So it's not just about industries, though. It's about the fact that when you have industrial development, you create a lot of jobs. 
but a lot of quality, decent, well-paying jobs. And I think that's what you find in all these countries that have been able to do it, and that's what Africa must do. Yeah, the knowledge economy is really, really important to, in driving this. Um, and also, looking at um, friendly environments for investments, you know, it's very critical, needs to be done, you know, but when you look at the knowledge economy and all the other aspects that, you know, how do we protect people's intellectual property, for example, you know, because when I look, when you, you mentioned Samsung, they were able to do it because mm -hmm. they, they somebody, someone's intellectual prop property was protected. You know, how does this sit in the whole industrialization strategy for the AFDB? Yeah, you know, one of the things that you find is if you're going to actually create clusters of innovation, you have to make sure that those that actually develop the innovations can have their patents, they can have intellectual property rights protection. And those are areas that are very, very important to drive creativity, innovation, and entrepreneurship uh, on the continent. So one of the big areas for us is how do we improve the business, investment, regulatory environment that allows private sector to thrive? And the second thing that's actually going to be very, very critical in trying to do this is what do we invest in? Because you cannot industrialize if you don't have the right productive capacity and if you don't have the right human capital in particular, the skills that are necessary for industrializing. You know, take a look at the world we live in today. You live in a world where artificial intelligence is going to rule, robotics is going to rule. You take a look at biotechnology, nanotechnology. These are all the things, quantum computing, these are the things that are going to dominate uh, the world. And so I want us, from the African Development Bank, we are saying to ourselves, we've got to start investing in our young people, not for the jobs of the past, but for these jobs of the future. And that's why the bank is going to be investing heavily in helping to create about 230 computer coding centers uh, that will allow young people to be able to get into the uh, coding, uh, coding market uh, globally. You know, the bank also has invested quite a lot in helping to create industrial parks. For example, we put $200 million into helping to create industrial parks, uh, you know, digital parks, for example, ICT parks, you know, in Cape Verde, uh, in Senegal, you know, and also we're doing that in, in, in Kenya and Rwanda. And so these are very, very important areas. That, so you need the knowledge, but you also need the enabling environment for that to thrive but then you must have the supportive infrastructure for the entrepreneurs to be able to take off.